Welcome to Under the Wing Helmet. I'm Kyle Simmons. My co-host, Michigan offensive lineman and former NFL player Thomas Gwines, and the host of the ASAP Elite podcast, Rob Penn. What's going on, guys? Hey, now. What's going on? Hey, just happy to be here. Another Michigan win. Let's delve into it. That's right. Uh, Michigan completely dominated Hawaii on Saturday night. I mean, they won, what, 56 to 10? Um J.J. McCarty got the start. He had, uh, what, 11 of 12 for 229 yards and three touchdowns. The Wolverines had 268 rushing yards. Blake Corum had nine carries for 88 yards and a score. So we're just going to get right to it. Thomas, was this another game where they were doing what they were supposed to do, or did you see something different? I I mean, I think that's exactly right. You know, Hawaii has um, been woefully under – under talented, if you will, if that's a real word, but uh, just as far as getting the the level of players to play on this particular stage, you know the uh, the Rainbow Warriors are always going to come in and give you a quality effort, but as far as actually having the the uh, talent pool, if you will, to be able to compete on this stage, you know they're they're still a few years away as far as recruiting goes, as far as bringing that level of talent in. So with that being said, all of these lofty the numbers that we saw, especially within the last two games, in my opinion, doesn't raise my expectations of of the Wolverines as far as what we are going to expect because these are things that should have taken place. These are the things that, you know, obviously a lot of the Michigan faithful, um, frankly, thought, you know, this was, this was supposed to happen, right? So with that being said, in my opinion, this is a televised scrimmage. The good thing was we came out of it relatively injury free. A lot of guys are still getting that valuable playing time. We're able to kind of see some different wrinkles within the mix. So I think one of the big things that stood out to me, though, was the quarterback rating. Um, You you Mm -hmm. called out the numbers of J.J., J.J. had a quarterback rating of 99.2. That's just freaking insane, right? Mm -hmm. One of the uh, other young quarterback that we had, young Davis, 96.6. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Cade McNamara had a quarterback rating of 1.8 through the one pick had 26 yards four for six. So obviously there's some things there that need to be sorted out. That's going to be, you know, the big question mark, the big speaking point throughout the week. What is Michigan going to do with this, this two quarterback situation right now? But the beautiful thing for me was, was that that third string quarterback that I saw um, Davis kids got an arm. Um, showed me some some presence within the pocket. Um, I like the way the boys rallied around him once he got in. So these are the 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 small things, the idiosyncrasies that a lot of people don't really pay attention to is what's the tempo of the team when you got certain individuals plugged into the mix. So it's gonna be real interesting to see how that progresses thus far. And Rob, what do you think of that game? Well, I I loved it. I want to put a call on McCarthy also. He made a throw to Edwards on the sideline. That was a uh, that was an NFL throw, I must say, and uh, it pretty much went according to uh, the keys of the game. You know, for us to win, you know, uh, come out, get the superstars the ball, stay healthy, you know, and make a statement. You know, we did that. You know, on all three levels, Blake Crom did what Blake Crom does. McCarthy came out, you know, and won that job. You know, outright. And look, look, let's give it up to C.J. Stokes, too, because just like our backup court Thursday quarterback, C.J. Stokes can talk that bad boy. You know, I was thoroughly impressed by Stokes. You know, and uh, Edwards, like I said, he was carrying that, uh, carrying the pill. You know, he was able to do what Haskins did last year and really execute that position to its, its, its fullest. You know, so easy win. They went in and executed it. This is what we needed to see. We didn't need to see a, mm-hmm. 38-6, a 38-16 game, you know, like we've been getting over the last few years. You know, let's see if we can keep that up. Uh, we made a statement. You know, it, we look real. We look for real. You know, and uh, no, nothing makes me more happy. As you guys were just saying, as you just said, Rob, which is what I was going to ask you guys. So is JJ the, JJ the starter now? Is this what we're, we're expecting to hear this week, Rob? Is that what you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we got, we have to hear it. You see how they uh, how they gathered around him? You, <laughs> you said the elephant in the room, you know, McNamara. Look, man. He did what we needed to do last year. We needed to get on that national stage. We wanted to win some games, but 
this kid here, I think he's something special, man. We haven't seen this. We haven't seen this in a while. So I'm excited to see how it plays out. The season is about to get tougher, and I want to see what he's really made of. See the team rally behind him. You, like I said, you can tell all those, those hats when uh, Hawaii was busting through the line. You know, uh, it was a point of that game where Hawaii really, uh, you know, showed that they are a team to deal with. And uh, what did they do in the, in the WAC, correct? Oh, uh, Mountain West. Mountain West. Mountain West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they're going to win some games in the Mountain West. You know, uh, my boy, uh, Colt Brennan. Is that the coach there? Yep. Yeah, Colt was okay. Uh, he Colt was a quarterback, too. Him and yeah, Timmy Colt Chang was a quarterback, and then uh, Timmy Chang. Timmy Chang was that guy when he was yeah, here as well. Yeah, yeah but I uh, had a couple buddies that played there. Uh, Travis Boy, you know. Uh, huh. Yeah, another one of my buddies, John West, who I went to Juco with, man. Yeah, so they 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 have pretty good talent out there in Hawaii, man. But uh, they're just a couple years away. But they've been a couple years away for like uh, ever since Georgia, right? The Georgia game, correct? Right. When they, yeah, right. When they, yeah, I remember that. You know, so they're not a poo poo, you know, program. But so uh, the interesting thing for me is this: How does one handle pressure? They say pressure bust pipes. When I'm watching Kay McNamara's body language, it's definitely speaking volumes at this particular point. I think it's a little bit of uh, the carryover from the Colorado State game. Um, when you saw some of Cade's passes in the dirt, the interception was woefully underthrown. Um, dare I say? decision overall um so these are some of the things in which i'm seeing i you know i i think we even may have given up another sack this this week so again it goes back to what's taking place in the huddle what's taking place in the locker room it's seemingly the team overall is more responsive to when jj's in and like i said before the telltale sign for me was was when um young davis was in there Seemingly, like I said, he had a really good control and um, understanding of the offense where, you know, guys were rallying around him. So Kate is the older guy. Kate, you know, as Rob alluded to, got us to the chip, got a couple of monkeys off of our back. So you got to respect the body of work that that young man put in last year. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's just some of the the overall athleticism that you see with a JJ. The kid can run. The kid can throw. And that was the biggest thing. Um, uh, for for last week's game was I wanted to see this kid's arm. I wanted to see his level of accuracy, not just on you know taking the top off, but I want to see those mid range passes. The one chink in the armor which I saw was was that some of his passes which were caught. I think if he could have put him in a better location as far as leading the receiver just a little bit more, where I don't have to necessarily turn around or do all these other theatrics to catch the ball, if you will, to catch these guys in stride. That's the only chink in which I saw within the past game from this young man, that being J.J. McCartney, um, uh, the, the previous game. So now let's speak about the difference between a Michigan and, let's say, an Alabama. Yeah. Bama's got guys as far as if the one goes down, our number two and three, four are just as good, could easily be starting at other programs. We saw that a couple of several years ago back uh, with the team down south when their number one quarterback went down and their number two just came in and just lit it up. So that's what I want to see now at Michigan, our ability to develop quarterbacks. But but also in that same vein, we have to continue to stay on the national stage in order to continue to track, recruit and retain these top tier quarterbacks. Because these kids are coming in now expecting to win, well, expecting to win national champion, but the very least to be in the mix to play for it. And if we're not in that level of conversation, we're not going to, within this totality, bring in those top tier athletes that we can say, hey, when my time comes, I'm, I'm cool with sitting, you know, a couple of two, three years, because I know when my time comes, I'm going to have the ability to be starting and playing and challenging for a national championship. So, you know, like I said, when we win, everybody eats, everybody's happy. So that, that to me is going to be one of the few things I'm going to sit back and watch, see how this plays out. Well, as Rob, you were saying, like, uh, I think in week one, you were saying that we were on the, this five-year trajectory to kind of get to where Thomas is saying, you think, Playing JJ, getting them in there now, does that kind of accelerate this a little bit, or you think we're still going to be on that five-year trajectory? 
we don't, we don't know what we're going to get, man. Uh, we're playing games right now that, like I said, we definitely should, uh, you know, uh, we, we're not getting that look. You mm -hmm. test it. You know, that's very important. Like I said, this week, we know coming up, we have Connecticut. And following that, we have Maryland. Until we get to the depth of that Big Ten schedule, you know, we, we really can't say. Right. Yeah, you're right. So we're going to see what week three here. We got uh, UConn coming into the big house for a noon kickoff. Uh, the Huskies are one and two coming off a home loss to Syracuse on Saturday. It was 48 to 14. So, I mean, I guess it's just the same song for week three, Thomas. Just we're going to go into this expecting to, to roll it or anything we should look for. I think, I think the huge thing right now is that we have to continue to take advantage of these game reps. I don't care if it's little sisters or the poor. Mm -hmm. I still got a hundred plus thousand people in the stadium. It's still going to be televised game, big 10 network, ABC, wherever they end up showing the game. So we have to take this time <clears throat> to get this, this game work. And even if it's against a lesser opponent, it's incumbent upon our coaches to really instill, push, emphasize amongst the players. Again, I don't care if it's little sisters or the poor. Go out here and let's execute the game plan. Let's work on a little thing, the doubles and the details. Focus on those little idiosyncrasies that take place within every position, making sure you're taking a good gap step here if you're playing on the offensive line, making sure you're using your hands, getting off the line of scrimmage if you're a wide receiver, making sure as the quarterback I'm getting my hips and my shoulders, you know, downfield aimed at, at, at my particular target. All of these little things right now, as I like to say, when you know, if I'm coaching guys in the weight room, push-ups are free. At this particular point in time, this work that you're getting right now, this game work is free. It's still a game. The expectations are still there, but you don't necessarily have the pressure, as Rob alluded to, of being in, in the, the thick of the, the Big Ten season. So with that being said, yes, this should be another blowout victory for the Wolverines. I'm definitely expecting, I'm hoping to see Orgy, uh, the other quarterback, gets some playing time this week. I'm not really sure why we didn't see him last week. So hopefully, maybe there should be a little bit of a of a coaching role, uh, cute quarterback rotation with these other quarterbacks. And um, again, this is valuable time for these guys to get some game time experience, go out there and show their wares, and uh, hopefully build a level of confidence not only in themselves but in the coaches at the same time. Rob, what do you got for this week for us? Well, this week, like you said, uh, they got beat up by Syracuse last week. You know, barely sweep. Oh, well, they beat Central Connecticut, you know, 28 to 3. And they lost in the first week against uh, Utah State, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this is, the, this is Hawaii, you know, Hawaii East. You know, let's just be serious about it. Same rules apply from last game, you know, is the, to come out, get the, get the guys to rock, you know, get them to rock, throw it around. Let's see what, what they can do. Let's put JJ's arm in some stressful situations. I do want to call out the other touchdown they threw last week to Cornelius uh, Cornelius uh, in the corner there when he was rolling out and he hit him on the fly. Man, that was beautiful for a touchdown when he ran back that, that cornerback to the pylon. I was impressed. Let's put him in some more of those situations. You know, the running backs are going to do what they're going to do. The receivers are going to do what they're going to do. And the defense is going to hold steady. I think Mike Moore has really been showing up. You know, uh, I like it, man. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, the smack is <laughs> it's coming <laughs> one more time. And I, there's nothing more that I enjoy. You know, I got to the point that a Hawaii game that it was like, again, 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 you know what I, that's what I need. I need, you know, that, that does well for my psyche. And do we think. Yeah, definitely when we're, when we're able to make the game boring, so to speak, um, when it's supposed to be, and uh, definitely brings down the, the anxiety levels, if you will. Yeah, for sure. and, and to yeah. your point, Rob, when, when you're watching us execute, on, in, in a way in which we should be executing. It's a very positive thing to see. It's positive for the fans. And most importantly, it's positive for the kids. And, you know, like yeah. I said, we have to we have to continue to keep in mind that these are still 18, 19, 20-year-old kids out there playing a game. And the more that they can see themselves being successful, hopefully that, that further bolsters their, their confidence in not only themselves, but their teammates and what their coaches have been preaching all year long. Hey, I want to give shout outs to uh, Wilson too. Hey, that kid is balling, man. He uh, caught a touchdown last week, took a reverse back to the house. You know, he caught a screen the week before, you know, the uh, game one, and he took that one to the house. And I'm impressed by this kid too. We're pretty deep, you know. So uh, let's see what Harbaugh has to, uh, has cooked up next game. They're staying to their identity also. 
They're still going to run first. I like that. We didn't pass the ball a lot of times last week. We made a lot of accurate, a lot of high percentage passes. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. also, you know, like I said, the running game just was a terror. So as long as we stick into what his system is, his philosophy, I think we're strong. It's the same philosophy that we saw at uh, in San Francisco that we saw, saw at Stanford. You know, and it, it works. It works. Just need the players to execute it. That's it for this week's episode of Under the Wings Helmet. We'll be back next week with a recap of week three, and we'll set the table for week four. Also, be sure to subscribe and listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, or wherever you listen to your podcast. For Thomas Gwines and Rob Penn, I'm Kyle Simmons. Go Blue. Go Blue. Go Blue, baby. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>